Thanks. Right. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and um, thank you very much for um, joining us. Uh, we're just waiting a few minutes. Uh, we have a few more guests okay. coming online, but um, welcome to the first webinar of the Nautical Institute. And um, this is of the Singapore branch. And unfortunately, due to this extraordinary situation we are faced with, our annual seminar, um, which uh, was supposed to take place uh, in May, is being postponed and is now scheduled to take place on 14th October 2020. Um, we trust um, we have uh, all of you all in participation because we require you to make it a success. So watch the space for more. And 14th October, we would be having you all along with us very soon. Um, a few house rules for today uh, before we uh, set sewing. And thank you for your kind understanding and cooperation. Um, as moderator of this meeting, I have muted your microphones and shut off your videos. Um, we request you kindly not to call upon your seafaring instincts and um, try to bypass the system and making yourself visible and audible unnecessarily. The main reason is this is to save you the embarrassment from having all the participants witness you from getting a walking from your spouse. And uh, not to mention the added benefit is we do not have any distractions during um, our webinar today and for our panel of speakers. If you have uh, any questions today, we um, request you to use the Zoom chat function and type out your question to everyone. In case you feel rather strongly about enforcing your personal data protection rights and remaining anonymous, uh, please feel free to address your question to me separately in the chat. You can separately select it to me as moderator and uh, I can raise this to our panel as appropriate. Um, please do not take it personally uh, again in case um, your question is not raised because we are faced with a time constraint and we don't want to keep you away from your desk for too long. Um, virtually this is wrong because I guess everybody is already at our desk. So uh, you know what I mean. The questions will be raised at a Q&A session after the uh, panelists um, have presented their views and uh, then we can all have a connective uh, discussion. Should there be any unaddressed issues during the webinar, please feel free to write to us at Singapore branch at nauticalinstitute.org. I would now like to pass the microphone again virtually to our branch president, Captain Eves Vanderborn, to share with us briefly on the branch activities and introduce our expert panel of today. Over to you, Yves. Thanks, Harry. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, uh, wherever you are. I think we have some uh, international guests here as well. Thanks for joining. Actually, I was, I was reflecting, Harry, it, it would have been today our conference. We originally scheduled our main conference for the 20th of May, so it's, it's quite a coincidence that we are now doing a virtual webinar at, at uh, the same time that we are planning our conference. So that I thought that was interesting, but like you say, let's hope that by 14 October we can uh, come out of the house again and uh, gather. Um, for today, we have two panelists with us. Um, I will introduce them to you. Uh, let me first introduce Harry, for those of you who don't know Harry. I doubt anybody doesn't know Harry. Um, he's the regional head of business relations at uh, Ship Owners. Um, apart from that, as his day job, he also is the vice president of the branch here in Singapore for the Nautical Institute. A big thank you as well going to Harry and ship owners for making the software available to us that allows us to do this uh, webinar. On the panel today we have Anna. Um, Anna is the Marine HR Manager at uh, Stana Marine. 
she is a member of the committee of the Singapore branch as well. Previously, she was honorary secretary at the Cyprus branch of the Nautical Institute. And she's also a member of the Younger Member Council um, of BNI. We're happy to have her with us uh, this afternoon to give her perspective from the crewing uh, manager side. We also have Rushali with us. Um, Frushali is a psychotherapist. She works as a counselor on consultative basis at uh, the Raffles Medical Hospital. She is from a seafaring um, family as well and is very familiar with shipping industry and how seafarers are doing. She's passionate about creating an awareness of mental health issues, certainly in the difficult times that, that we are going through. That's for our panelists. Um, quick introduction for those of you who do not know the Nautical Institute. I'm sure you do, but we are um, a global independent body for maritime professionals organized by seafarers. The main purpose of the Nautical Institute is to promote the standing of the maritime profession afloat and ashore. The Nautical Institute has uh, NGO status at the IMO, which means that we are able to represent the views, the problems um, related to the seafarer directly at the IMO. The NI also works together quite closely with a large number of industry bodies, again, to try and promote the standards that seafarers have, the training that is available to them, and the work that they are doing. One of the main achievements I would say that NI has done, there's many, but one of the main ones I feel would be for the offshore industry where they have set up the dynamic positioning certification uh, scheme. This has been running for I think about 30 years um, and is, was created by NI and is uh, managed by the NI as well. Um, originally the NI was founded in the UK uh, back in 1990. It currently has around over 17,000 members worldwide with a large number of branch offices in various regions. For example, in Singapore, the branch here was set up in late 2015. We had our first activity and our first meeting early 2016, so we are only four years young. In that time, we managed to get around 185 members. So we're doing quite well on the member from, but it would be really good for those of you who are not yet a member of the Nautical Institute, please do sign up. Um, it is not expensive at all. It's about 143 pounds a year um, to be a normal member. There are quite a lot of benefits that you are getting. Um, of course, you get discounts if you are coming to conferences that we organize. You also get the Seaways magazine delivered to you, which has really interesting information. You have professional recognition, if you can say that you are a member of the Nautical Institute or you are an associate fellow. Also, the Nautical Institute provides one free video tell training for you on an annual basis. So that alone already gives you back your uh, membership fees if you follow up that offer. And there is a lot of other ways in which the NI can provide you with uh, CPD training that everybody loves these days. A um, little bit on before I hand over back to Harry, the topic of today will be on the seafarer well-being, the mental well-being. We know all the problems the seafarers are going through. I'll let Harry explain that. The one point I wanted to say is that it is a Mental Health Awareness Week. It is in the UK, but I would want to stress it globally anyway, that it is important for us that we look after the mental health um, of the seafarers, which basically make the world turn. Um, with that, Harry, I'm going to pass it back to you. Uh, and the panel for a good discussion. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Eves. And um, okay, let's get back to the topic now. I think uh, we've spent some time in discussing about the NI. Um, as all of us know, I think uh, no surprise to all, COVID-19 has taken the world by storm. 
it's wreaked havoc globally by destroying people and their livelihoods as well. Um, the pandemic has taken absolutely no prisoners. It has shown no mercy or discrimination in the name of race, uh, caste, creed, nationality, color, gender, so on and so forth. Um, our seafaring community too has been no exception. It's suffering due to the continuous shift of goalposts. The playing field is going on moving um, with coastal and port states uh, imposing several restrictions on the movement of any personnel, thereby making uh, crew changes extremely challenging. This has had a domino effect on all aspects of our unique profession, um, with the seafarers bearing the brunt of uh, all the proceedings. Um, that's uh, how it is. With an aim to address these problems, our expert panel, as introduced by our president, has the unique combination of a ship manager's perspective, as well as from a psychological angle, offering recommendations to help and address these concerns. I would like to invite Anya now to share her views on the ship manager's perspective and how the industry is coping with this in supporting the seafarers on board and at home. Over to you now, Anya. Uh, thank you, Harry, for that introduction. Um, I will be speaking uh, from the perspective of ship managers and, and current personnel. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, the current situation is very difficult and it is unprecedented. And although ship managers and current personnel are adaptive to changes in, in the volatile market that our industry is, and we support seafarers regardless of the challenge, the situation now is dy dynamically changing and it will not normalize in the next weeks or even months. Uh, it's really difficult to predict uh, what will happen uh, globally and with all the national restrictions in place. Uh, I strongly feel that the key now is to find balance and ensure that all our seafarers are supported, uh, both ashore and at sea, and they, that they still feel that they're part of, of the company and, and the industry. Um, therefore, the needs of seafarers at home and at sea need to be identified and addressed. Industry standards need to be implemented to offer a broad-based support. And we also need to ascertain how the situation can be made more tolerable to our valued seafarers. Um, of course, off hand, the concerns of the seafarers and stress stem from the financial aspects, the uncertainty of disembarkation and that of joining for those stranded at home. The isolation on boards and the prolonged contracts lead to fatigue, burnout and possible safety related issues. But I'd like to focus more on the situation of seafarers at home and at sea and the solutions that us as ship managers and, and companies can implement. Um, for the crew on board, the most pressing concern is of course the delayed disembarkation and this is by months in many cases. Um, crew has not been able to disembark for at least two months now um, globally. So I'll try to look into the issues that are of concert on boards and solutions that can be applied in the interim prior to crew changes are affected. Um, it goes without saying that even though the companies and governing bodies, IMO, the Nautical Institute, can still apply guidelines, it's without it's beyond our reach to actually implement um, crew changes, although we do try our best. Um, so of course, at the onset of the COVID-19 situation, the biggest concern for our crew on board was to keep them safe and healthy. Risk assessment has been implemented to avoid the crew contracting the virus and transiting it on board. They'll be from personally visiting the, the vessel or from shore leave or from crew to join the vessel that they're actually healthy in transit. Of course, it followed with ship management plans that offered safety, operational and control measures. However, only now in the, in the last few weeks, we realize that there is other risk to the virus than the virus itself and the illness and the possible fatalities. And hence our topic today on, on the mental well-being and the effects of that. In the last year, of course, the industry agenda was very much focused on health and mental well-being, uh, perpetuated by the isolation on boards. It's worth to mention that the agenda of IMO in 2018 was exactly that, was um, seafarers. Uh, well-being and health. The isolation on board has been brought about by the increase in workloads, the faster port turnarounds, 
and the availability of internet on board and all the personal devices that come with it. So the laps of the phone, and we've all assumed that because of that, the crew is more isolated than they were a few years back. When you'd see the crew are gathering together in the common space, they watch videos together, they play darts. Back in the day, there were bars on board. So this has changed. And the problem of isolation is now even of greater importance. On the other hand, though, there is very little personal space on board. On the ocean going ships, you have your own small cabins, but on the offshore side or on the cruise liners, you actually have shared cabins and the rest of the ship space is, is still shared. So under those circumstances, it's really difficult to gain perspective on, on things in such conditions as you're continuously stuck, let's say, in your place of work. So imagine if you are unable to get out of your office and all your worries and issues just amount and you don't have an outlet for that. So perhaps a good idea to, to be implemented and not only in the current circumstances, that would also yield a long-term benefit, is to create a safe space on board where the crew could go relax and reflect, but at the same time offer a recreational area on board other than your usual gym and maybe a swimming pool for crew. And that could serve as your office water cooler. So the crew could engage and speak up and look out for one another and interact. And then that way maybe that would allow them to be a bit more human and personal with one another and share their concerns. And of course, those area of how crew interacts on board is predominantly dependent on the senior management on board and their leadership and how they actually promote uh, crew cohesion. So maybe now it's time for the senior management and then officers on board to take lead on proactive tax on task talks on board, sorry, and share with their crew members concerns of isolation, promote humanity on board and promote talking because everyone is wrapped up in work, the schedule is tight, the ships are still running. But I think it would be very beneficial for, for crew on board to put some time aside to, to reflect and to actually openly talk uh, about issues that they might be facing. So yes, the master should play the pivotal role on board to extend help and support to the crew but that should be supported also by the company. The company ashore needs to assist the master with perhaps designating a, a psychologist or developing a program, involve the master, another designated person on board um, to create a program and monitor and help the person on board. And this again would have long-term benefits. Once you've allowed to train your staff on board, how to tackle and how to address concerns on board, this would go beyond the current COVID-19 situations. I think the crew would appreciate that they know there's someone on board they can openly talk to. Or also the crew would benefit greatly from having the option to openly talk to someone other than their shipboard colleagues, such as a specialist or a counseling service um, to share their concerns with. Um, some of the, the worries that seafarers may have they might be too personal or they don't really wish to share them with their colleagues or even company uh, employees. So with this regard, the company could perhaps extend to the crew the available channels of help within and outside of the organization. And I think it's worth to mention uh, the International Seafarers Welfare and Assistant Network. Uh, they've been very proactive in the last weeks uh, trying to help seafarers with the stress on board. Um, and it's needless to say that the buildup of frustration and worries and stress and fatigue and the lack of shore leave for many, many weeks now can also lead to conflicts on board. So it is crucial for crew to have that counseling opportunities or an opportunity to speak up. Um, another thing that the company can assist with um, is ensuring that the crew members maintain contact with their loved ones and families. Uh, that might be through offering phone calls, increased internet, anything to help seafarers reconnect uh, back with the shore. Um, the last point that I have that may be of concern to crew on board is their well-being with regards to actual physical health. We now don't see we know that some of our seafarers are on control medication, so there is worry, there worry may be that what if I run out of medication? Where can I get it prescribed? And in the past, the past being a few months back only, when they were ill, 
they had the opportunity to go ashore, see a doctor, or the doctor would come to them on their visit at the local clinic. Currently, the help is only extended to the seriously ill, so that might be one of the worries that the crew members experience on board, that access to, to healthcare. Um, the important thing to realize, it, it's on us, it's on the ship managers, the employers, the, the ship owners, for the crew on board is that we must keep them updated with regular updates, both on the situation globally and with the port and travel restrictions. Um, it's crucial that the company keeps seafarers up to date with what actions we actually are taking from shore and what restrictions are implemented. There's an overload of information. I think it's really important that we digest that and provide our seafarers with what's really important. Um, and this is also for, for the crewing side of things and the shore companies to be more engaged with seafarers, to dedicate them time to communicate, maybe to reach out to their families, to share what the situation is on board and to ensure them that everything that we can do is, is being done, uh, plans are being implemented and there's action undertaken to, to help them with what they're um, experiencing on board. Um, of course, another point is, is the financial situation. So perhaps we can compensate the crew that's on board overdue with their contract. But this is, of course, just a guidance. It's up to each company's uh, financial viability and possibilities. So just one of the options. Um, moving on, I'm being told I'm running out of time. Um, crew at home that is still with the employer and with the company. Um, they are, of course, also faced with a lockdown and isolation. They're anxious about their cost of living, as they usually would plan their budgets um, along their projected um, tour of duties and their contracts. And of course, again, the employer might not be able to support them uh, with those needs, such as a cash advance, uh, let's say. But it is important that we identify those issues that crew at home are experiencing and that we try to address them. Another part that the crew may be having at home is that not only they do not know what their next assignment is, they're not able to professionally develop, they cannot evaluate their medical certificates or certificate as such. So it would be a good idea to engage them in another way, perhaps offer a webinar or offer an online training to, to help them focus on their professional development and at the same time, let them know that they're still a valued part of the, of the industry and of our company and keep them engaged. And it's also important to say, and should be actually needless to say, that it is vital to keep crew ashore regularly updated with their planning, their next schedule assignments. And of course, this is subject to restrictions, um, national, international. But it's also good to share additional requirements that might come with their next assignment, a quarantine period, additional medical tests, so they can in turn share that with their families. So it is really crucial just to highlight again for the companies to be involved and engaged to, by keeping the crew ashore and at home up to date with everything uh, that's ongoing, offer corporate advice and reassure that they're being looked after. Um, I'll just quickly summarize before I pass to my colleague. Um, it's important for the ship manager to offer coping strategies and techniques for mental well-being. Keep them up to date with developments and if possible assist them financially. Again, this is within each company's possibilities. Um, perhaps the company could offer advice on, on health management, on stress management, on even finance management with your affiliated financial institution. And going forward, and I hope that Vrushali will actually mention that because it's also important for seafarers. Uh, whenever seafarer goes on board, they are prepared for that given duration of their tour of duty. So perhaps going forward, it will be good to prepare them financially and mentally that their duration of tour of duty might actually be shorter or, or longer. Um, most importantly, however, action do speaks louder than words. So. It is still again important of the companies to share with crew of what they're undertaking for crew on board and ashore. And also, of course, update them with what's going on internationally with restrictions. 
Um, and of course, it is human nature to worry. And however, we can manage stress and anxiety with coping strategies. Um, it is crucial that we assist our seafarers to manage to distinguish facts from unnecessary worry and let them open up and let them know that they can speak out when it's needed. Um, so my colleague Rushai will now share more on how to deal with fatigue, stress, strain and burnout and address those mental well-being issues. Excellent. Um, many thanks. Yeah, many thanks, Anna. And uh, uh, let me just ask uh, Rishali now to uh, come on screen as well. Um, yep, Rishali. Uh, so uh, you've been through what um, Anya shared with us. Excellent thoughts, Anya, uh, before you've gone off. And uh, indeed, not uh, smooth sailing for anyone involved in the process. I mean, um, the shore establishments uh, are going through uh, quite a torrid time trying to get a crew to uh, go on and off. Um, the seamen also, uh, the seafarers also are having a torrid time because they are not sure of the situation at home. So, Rishali, um, I yeah. just want to set the scene. I want to add a few things over here before I let you take off on your uh, expertise. This is a situation whereby no industry has been um, spared so far. Nobody's been uh, prepared for it, you know. And uh, aviation, um, road, rail, transport services, banking, we could go on forever with the list. All this has been hit extremely hard, partial layoffs, some temporary, some permanent retrenchment. And frankly, with this pandemic, there is very little anyone has been uh, able to do. Um, we have often joked, I mean, about the Avengers Endgame, you know, Thanos 19 snapped his fingers, half the population disappeared for the better of all. And as cynical as it may sound now, it does seem that this pandemic is somewhat resetting a lot of aspects of what on an everyday basis we used to consider as normal. Um, similarly, our seafarers at the moment are feeling rather aggrieved because apparently they feel that nobody bothers or cares. Um, actually, with this situation and taking the examples of the other industries as well, um, I wouldn't be too far from the truth when I say that everyone is trying extremely hard. Some are navigating in restricted visibility um, in the sense that, you know, I mean, nobody knows um, how to tackle this pandemic. Everyone's still getting um, around it. Uh, but definitely everybody is trying hard. Again, there is this paradox about the seafarer who's stranded ashore and unable to go on board, commence his wages and uh, put uh, food on the table. And there are some uh, lobbies that opine that the seafarer on board is actually in a better position than those ashore. He's in a safe zone. Um, he doesn't have to worry about um, infections unless, of course, somebody from ashore comes and uh, uh, starts the whole um, naughty process as such. And uh, what happens is they don't have to worry about uh, getting paid at the moment. Uh, this is definitely a discussion for another forum. Um, it's uh, two uh, ways of thinking about it. But we are keen to tap on your expertise as to why our seafarers at the moment are feeling aggrieved. Why are they feeling abandoned? Is this a case of them pessimistically seeing the glass as half empty rather than half full? Or um, is, is definitely there's something that's missing so that um, it's not exactly smooth sailing? What would it take, in your opinion, to bridge this uh, gap of trust? What leap of faith is required? You know, a lot of this would be for each uh, party to understand the other point of view. And with this, I would leave the floor to you, uh, Rishali. Thank you, Harik. Uh, and Anna, thank you. That, uh, that also went pretty well. That was a good job done there. So Hari, I'm going to start off with uh, the point of pessimism and glass half full and half empty. It actually depends upon the contents of the glass. Um, so, and what you choose to do with the contents of the glass. So let's look at this with, uh, in a right spirit. Uh, I will go with optimism here. So the pandemic has ruptured the community. People around the world are facing mental health issues. Uh, but this traumatic, crisis also opens and it has created opportunities for survivors. So we have to really equip ourselves to be uh, adaptable. That is how I would want to go ahead with. Uh, we are speaking about mental health issues, so let us understand what is uh, mental well-being. So mental well-being is actually a state where an individual can cope with normal stresses of life and can work productively. So mental well-being includes emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Emotional, healthy people can feel stress. It is perfectly normal. However, they know how to manage their negative emotions. Uh, 
emotions what are emotions very often we speak about fear anger sadness uh, but what what are all they they are all basically emotions and at a basic level emotions are actually responses they are built responses that help us to navigate through the day they are important emotions are important even happiness is an emotion a very positive emotion we are not always encouraged to get in touch with our emotions we maintain a facade whether it is in our office uh, or on the social media and then we struggle to be that strong independent and happy person this leads to feeling to you know to be isolated from the people that we really are and as well from reality so it's important to understand emotions when we understand emotions it actually helps us to respond more effectively we don't react to a certain situation we actually respond um if it is possible there is this slide of anger uh, iceberg if uh, hurry you if you can get it if not i'll just continue so anger iceberg there is the tip of the iceberg which shows just anger but what are all those emotions below anger yeah thank you hari uh anger is displayed outwardly but there are a number of emotions hidden beneath it common roots of anger include sadness guilt frustration pain they make a person vulnerable yeah because they may not have the skills to manage them emotionally uh, or effectively anger is responsible or rather anger is a response for fear speaking about fear what is fear now fear and stress they actually go hand in hand fear is uh, predominant and currently what's happening because of the covid-19 situation people all across are are in this state of fear uh, it's an emotion which uh, is induced by perceived danger or threat and can cause psychological changes which can actually lead to ultimately behavioral changes and largely these kind of behavioral changes can be negative fear and anxiety are closely interrelated and one can trigger the other so since i spoke about fear and stress all kinds of fear that we are feeling right now it could be of uh, economic collapse fear of change fear of uncertainty they all lead to psychological distress which manifests into a behavior which what i mentioned earlier which is a negative uh, way that people can actually see so stress stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension the source of stress can be physical uh, in the external world or something emotional uh, generated internally because you sense something bad is going to happen um separation from spouse uh, for seafarer is especially separation from spouse or family uh, which leads to loneliness all this can you know make a person stress stress is a type of a psychological pain which can increase the risk of mental illness such as depression ulcers heart attacks but having said that thing when you feel that stress why are you feeling that stress stress is actually your body's reaction to a challenge or a demand chronic stress disrupts the nervous system we become more jumpy we are volatile we are hyper vigilant although we continue to operate on a survival mode our survival strategies may be flawed we can easily be triggered into a flight or fight mode different people respond to the same stressor in a different way and not everyone will be stressed by the same things if opportunities are not created to vent our blocked grief an individual may become self destructive display dysregulated behavior and mental illness there is a slide of uh, physical signs of stress hurry if we can have that yeah thank you um so these these are actually physical uh, effects that a person might experience when they are stressed it could be a stomach ache it could be your uh, palms getting uh, sweaty your legs being shaky uh all these are actually a uh, physical uh, effects of stress um and after this stress now i just wanted to touch very briefly on um, suicide or suicidal ideation um societal people are deeply conflicted suicide is a desperate attempt to escape suffering that is unbearable suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideation are considered a risk factor suicidal uh, and it's actually a cry for help so prevention methods cannot be restricted to an individual community social and policy interventions will be essential i wanted to speak about this because very often we are hearing a lot of suicides um that are taking place uh, it's not just in 
uh, in the seafaring community, it is even uh, students tend to have these kind of societal thoughts and ideation. It's, it's very important that we address the issues and if, especially on ship, there might be a case where somebody is having these kind of thoughts, they need immediate attention. Uh, it is now really necessary to evaluate and revisualize the way we work. So what can companies or shipping organizations do, whether it is on board or even uh, in the organization, we have to educate people about expected psychological impact and reactions to trauma. Let them understand that psychological reaction is normal, improve understanding of stigma attached with mental health issues, facilitate effective communication with health professionals. Um, therapy eases the conflict between the mind and the body, helps to build self-confidence and know your self-worth. Identify risk factors. That is really important, again, whether it is on ship or it is in the office setting. You need to identify risk factors, early identification and management of mental wellness of employees, seafarers. Uh, you have to make sure that these are acute issues and they need help. Have a guide to combating workplace stress and uh, burnout. So seafaring is one of the most physically demanding professions. Fatigue management training will help. Repair ruptures. Any kind of issues which might create a very toxic environment, whether it's on ship or in office, you need to launch specific websites to address any kind of psychological issues because a toxic environment can very easily lead to a person being unhappy. And if it is not addressed, it can actually, you know, uh, uh, come out in a negative behavior and then maybe the work on ship may not go easy as uh, or how it needs to go. Uh, make routines, that helps, that is extremely helpful. Make routines, they create a sense of safety, make time to de-stress, this an individual can do. Um, boost emotional resilience. So what I would go with is you need to nourish yourself to flourish. So it is really important. Again, I cannot stress enough on self-care. This is extremely important, not just because it is COVID-19, even otherwise. Um, trauma training will be essential. This will also help manage anxieties. Supporting each other and staying on the same page makes people connected and safe. If we value it, we measure it. A simple well-being measuring scale will suffice uh, on ships. So you find a person who might be having certain issues. It's best to ask them. Uh, I know in schools we usually have with children a circle time. Give time for your officers and for your crew when you're on board. Just have a brief talk, have a brief chat. Ask them how was their night? Did they sleep well? Are they eating well? Um, information sharing will be crucially important so far as confidentiality allows it. So respect boundaries. We want our officers and crew to be ambitious, articulate, caring, determined, independent, resilient, respectful, responsible, and successful. It's a tall order. But we want all, all of this. Uh, companies can look at creating opportunities to talk through what has been difficult for the seafarers, respect personal uh, tragedies, show compassionate solidarity with employees and celebrate values. Give them a sense of hope. Hope is growth. Self-care, again, to deal with any kind of physiological factors and that especially because if a person hasn't rested enough, it can show uh, in fatigue and it is necessary, again, coming back to self-care, make time for yourself, eat well, stay healthy. Follow-up, follow-up, it provides an update on the process and feedback. Feedback is also essential because it's an important form of communication. Uh, if there is no proper feedback, we are doing a great disservice. So feedback is really very essential. Uh, it also makes the individual feel valued. Um, so this is from my side. I hope this is helpful. Yes, um, excellent. Um, thanks, Roshali. I think um, this is definitely a, a perspective uh, where uh, we usually aren't uh, an expert in and very thanks for uh, this thing. We've got uh, Anna with us as well. We've um, got a bit of uh, questions and uh, this is actually the first one is from uh, Captain Anuj Velankar of the UK PNI Club. And this is a question from uh, to Vrishali. 
since you're from a seafarer's background, um, what are your thoughts on um, that the older generation of seafarers were much more stronger mentally and um, never seemed to have mental health issues? Is this a trend, something new for the modern seafarer? And this also ties in very uh, much with Captain Sangam, who has also asked uh, whether there are any particular age groups who you feel are more vulnerable to a severe stress. Um, what would you think, Vishali? Yeah. Uh, so since I'm from the seafaring background, I used to hear this very often, whether it was from my father or from my father-in-law, who used to say that in those days, uh, which were one of the best days, the ships were made of wood and the <laughs> captain or the chief engineers were made of uh, metal. Um, but having said that thing, look, in those days also, the problems were there. It is just that there was not enough uh, awareness. They were there, but since there was not enough awareness, people kind of just managed and coped with it. They might have managed and coped with it a little differently from the current generation. The current generation, you also talked about this, is it that certain people are vulnerable? No, I would not say that just a certain few are vulnerable. Uh, let me take this step by step. So are cadets really vulnerable or a person who's joining a new company vulnerable? Uh, is it that the person involved or the individual feels that I'm just going to try my hand at it. This is not really important. If I don't get through this, I can do something else. So they go in with that kind of an attitude as opposed to somebody who really wants to be a seafarer or an officer or a crew. That is one issue which I feel wherein they feel since they're going with that particular mindset. You could also have a family member who might say, hey, you know what, just, just try your hand at it. See how you feel about it. Because And we are currently so focused upon being perfect. We are not focused upon being brave. We do not value failures. Everything has to be very perfect. Uh, any kind or any point that the person feels that I have failed, it is like a big gloom, uh, gloom and doom story for them. Uh, so these kind, uh, these kind of individuals, and they are there in all kinds of companies and organizations. They might need a little more uh, support, uh, and also they should be told that, or maybe we, sh we as a community should be actually valuing failure. Failure is not end. Failure is a step to learn. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Thanks, Rushali. There is uh, one question from uh, Jillian Carson Jackson for Anya, I would think. Um, how can we support the seafarers still at home when they're waiting to join a ship? Not everybody is on uh, you know, the continuous wage scheme. There are many on contract basis. Um, they are not on board. They have lesser access to support and resources. So how do you all reach out uh, and how can we uh, spend uh, resources into developing this uh, this section of CFER. Uh, thank you, Julian, for that question. Of course, we can only offer guidelines and suggestions and look what the CFRs would like to receive from their companies. Hari, as you likely said, uh, as you as you said rightly, CFRs are not on permanent contracts. Are these who actually need our assistance the most? Like I mentioned. One of the offers could be a professional development, um, offering webinars, offering courses online, or anything that keeps the seafarers engaged. Uh, but it goes without saying that the biggest concern for those careers, of course, is the finances. They're waiting for a very long time now to rejoin. So their finances, their budgeting, and their sailing um, schedule is very much disrupted. As per the latest IMO guideline, um, that's to be implemented though as a guideline in the next month. It suggested that companies offer uh, cash advances um, to their crew mm -hmm. on boards, but this again, the guideline also says that it's up to each company's financial availability and, and possibilities. Uh, but this step would definitely be the one that the seafarers at home would welcome, other than being praised, being engaged, and being kept in the loop and involved in, in what's happening. And of course, we cannot tell our crew that you will join in a week and a month, but we can keep them updated that if you will be able to affect the crew change, you're joining at this date, you will join at this port. This is the restrictions. You need to have a quarantine or you won't need to have a quarantine. But keep, keep them in the loop so they still feel that they're needed and they're part of the company. Because even though the seafarers might be on contractual basis, they tend to be with the company for many years. Right. And we also have organizations such as us, the Nautical Institute, etc., who are here exactly for this, mm. you know, um, who we can actually uh, 
uh, reach out and we can actually if uh, they're in touch with us as well and they're members with us as uh, as uh, Eve's also pointed out but even if they are not members I'm sure we could do a lot for our seafarers where we can actually give them some uh, confidence um, thank you there's one more question which I think um, would be good for Anna um, Anna Mama the Kramul Hossein has asked us uh, has said that we talk of many opportunities um, ideas procedures but is there anything on uh, implementing these in developing countries? Is this a challenge because of uh, because of the geographical location or the uh, the development of the country as such? Is developing countries more challenging where you're reaching out to implementing procedures or uh, getting crew changes, etc., as such? Uh, I wouldn't think so. Uh, now, to affect a crew change is down to each of the country's national restrictions, the board and lockdown, the availability of flights or not. Uh, we know that India is now facilitating crew changes uh, for their own nationals. Um, I know that in the Philippines, there are talks of uh, flights going out of the Philippines, uh, I think currently to, in U to Europe, um, to help crew managers and ship owners to affect crew changes. Uh, so I wouldn't say or even discriminate that it's a developing country or not, that we see there's a better effect or more reach. Um, currently with the restrictions, it's really we have to work with what each country is offering and facilitating. Right. Yes, I do agree with you. And um, I think, um, excuse me, while I scroll down the questions, they are coming in hard and fast, uh, which is a good thing because uh, this is a topic which definitely was something. Um, Rushali, are there any exercises, something which uh, people can do to improve mental well-being? Yeah, we talk of physical well-being, but in your uh, line of expertise, what would you think? Similarly, how does one deal with toxic negativity in the same way as mental health? Um, especially, uh, the first thing would be switch off your WhatsApp and filter out the fake news uh, because there's a lot flying around and you know you can be very susceptible to it depending on your frame of mind. Sorry, not my expertise. I should leave you to say this. Uh, but uh, these are the questions that have come up. So your thoughts, please, on this. Yeah. So uh, mental exercises. There are very good apps. Uh, there's something called Headspace. Actually, I think so. I can share these uh, links later on. Maybe you can just forward them. Uh, there's a good uh, app called Headspace. So this is to do with mindfulness. Um, and what happens is uh, I am a promoter of mindfulness. I uh, totally uh, think that it is um, a kind of a therapy which is extremely useful. You don't need a big space. You don't need a gym. You can do it in the confines of your room. You can do it on a chair. You can do it standing, walking, whenever. So all you need to do is in those times, especially when you have these kind of a, a scenario where there is something that you cannot deal with, there has to be something, it is called the check-in, wherein you check in with yourself, how are you feeling that time? Because like I said, emotions actually then eventually translate into how you're feeling physically. If you're at some point feeling that shaky or there's something that you feel that I cannot cope and manage with this. And if it is possible for you at that given time, just take a three minute break and you can check in with yourself. Uh, mindfulness is largely, it is said, it is being with you at that moment and not thinking about the past, not thinking about the future, but being present at that particular moment. That is very helpful. Um, apart from that, physical exercises also actually help. And I know many ships have a lot of uh, gyms. And even if you don't have a gym, simple basic uh, exercises that you can learn, or there are so many online exercises that you can do uh, in the confines of your room can also elevate uh, your mood from being negative to being positive. Hydrate yourself. That is another very important thing because we don't really think so much of water, but hydration the uh, right amount is also helpful, eat healthy. Uh, these, they are very basic. They may sound very rudimentary, but they are extremely helpful and effective. Right, okay. Um, thank you, Rishali. There are a few questions which are on probably the same, um, same uh, tone as such, um, but Jillian has also asked on what would be the options to pressure administrations to support crew changes. Um, of course, there are existing guidelines but it seems that these are not being acted on. What can the NI or other organizations do to promote the guidelines or put pressure to ensure uh, crew changes happen? Um, I think Captain Manjit Handa has also um, said that he was very keen on hearing some concrete steps taken to resume crew changes. What is the current status of the government and uh, 
uh, offshore hubs, uh, which is along the same lines. So I think like we're coming back to crew changes being a very uh, important uh, topic, you know, and um, uh, this is something I think uh, I would also ask uh, Eves Vanderborn, our president, also to um, come on and speak from the NI's behalf. Eves, are you there? Hi, Harry. Yes. Yeah, hi, Eves. Yeah. Um, yeah, good question, actually. What NI is doing, I think, I think a lot is being done behind the scenes, maybe not always as visible as people would like it to be. The, the IMO guidelines are there. That's definitely something good that, that is going on. I, I do agree with the comments that are said that um, these do need to be implemented on a local level. And that really is up to the, the local governments to see how much they can, how much can be done. I, Anna earlier was saying that there are things that are being put in motion. Emirates is flying. There's um, a big crew hub being put up in the Netherlands somewhere. Carnival Cruises found their own way of uh, sailing their crew back to uh, to other countries. So people are coming up with with answers. And I think that now that the world is slowly starting to open up again, um, that that will provide opportunities for flights to start. We, we, we know that, for example, in Singapore last night, uh, it was announced how, how Singapore would start opening up again. Um, they announced similarly that um, the, the travel restrictions would slowly be lifted depending on, on which countries um, it would be. So I imagine all of these small steps will help in getting crew back to um, well, back to their home country and, and vice versa to get the new crew back um, on board. Um, and I is, as I, as I mentioned in the beginning, an NGO at uh, the IMO. They are um, similarly from that perspective pushing the IMO um, to, to put pressure on the flag states to implement these uh, guidelines. One last thing I would say on this maybe is the the recent message from the ITF um, to put uh, pressure on no longer extending the crew contracts. That definitely will put pressure on countries to open up and um, assist assist with the crew change. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Um, I do say that there are some crew changes happening. I mean, I think um, uh, companies are working very hard and there are some crew changes we do get to see some success stories uh, coming across with a lot of uh, push from the off, uh, operator side. The owners are managing to get people off. Um, it is definitely a challenge. I think uh, uh, one of the biggest things actually where uh, it's also come as a comment that if we can resume crew changes, we don't have to bother much about psychology. I wish it was as easy as that because unfortunately, uh, while we all try to lobby and push, this isn't... Um, something where it's just a switch that we could switch on or off uh, how we wish we could. But um, uh, yes, Manjit, I know you're a bit of old school, but we all are. I mean, we've all been there on board at some point of the end. We fully sympathize with you. Um, and we've also torn our toys out of the pram when we were not getting relieved. But this situation is someplace where we also would require some understanding from our seafarers as well, because at the moment, like I think we are all collectively trying um, it's just that everybody is faced with this unprecedented situation that everyone was suddenly, you know, they decided to dig their heels in and get over cautious. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, most of the countries now are relaxing where surveys are permissible. Actually, we are having surveyors go back on board, reach out to ships and managing to um, actually uh, conduct surveys. You know, PNI surveys are going ahead. I think statutory surveys, there is movement going on now. There's partial relaxation of... Um, lockdowns in all country, uh, flights are talking of resuming, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And then um, I think that's always the saying where collectively, we all have to hold hands and probably, um, you know, vanquish uh, this uh, peril we are faced with. Um, there's one interesting question also from uh, Captain Kunal Nakra. Um, and this is to both speakers, Eves as well. Um, would the inclusion of ensuing mental health uh, within the purview of MLC 2006 help better management of this aspect. And again, this comes down to the question is, is it something that needs to be regulated to actually be effective? Or is this, um, do you think that it is uh, effective as it is now with the amount of organizations, apps, etc. available? Um, I know this is a bit of a, 
a push kind of thing. Uh, there are companies which may want to implement it. There may be some companies where crew mental health may not be the top priority. Um, they have a different mindset in the organizations there. Their drive is uh, uh, another thing. Um, but uh, I would uh, I would value your thoughts on this. Eves. Okay, I was waiting for someone else to take the initiative there. Um, I think mental well-being is, is it's a bit what Rishali was saying earlier. It's not a new problem. It's just being put in the spotlight more at the moment. And I think it is something we do need to work on a lot more uh, going forward. I don't necessarily think it is a, a new generation kind of problem. Um, I think the world that, that seafarers are living in now is quite different from when the old gang was uh, on board of uh, the wooden ships. Um, so I think it is something that, that definitely a lot more focus needs to be put on. And we, it's something we'll, we'll have to live with. And, and maybe putting it as part of the MLC, maybe that would be a good way forward. I think, yeah, putting it in the perspective, it's due to come in and then which everybody then has to do it at some point or another does um, help sometimes a little bit of, uh, we wouldn't call it arm twisting. I think uh, positive persuasion, if we can play with the words. And I mean, I'm surprised everyone uses this because my dad used to rile me when I used to go on board uh, sailing. You know, I'd started my sea career and he used to always quote me, oh, in our times, we used to have ships of wood and men of steel. And then I knew his next line. You know, nowadays, we have ships of steel and men of wood. So, uh, yeah, that is uh, so correct. Um, so, um, I think Captain Sangam also raises a very good point, saying that more communication with the seafarers is needed. I think Anna has just touched that. And if everybody does feel part of it, and they also do realize um, what effort everyone is taking, and, you know, sometimes uh, man proposes, God disposes. It's some sort of that thing. We are fighting against the forces of nature. Um, there are people dying, you know, I mean, uh, people can't even, uh, that's that's the danger of it. I think this generation hadn't seen anything like this. Yes, we had SARS and all, which was on a more uh, limited scale, but this is something which has probably uh, spared nobody and nobody was prepared for something like this. So um, that's uh, a positive is now that actually we are managing to kind of get there. Um, this is uh, pretty much there. Um, I know, I mean, we can't uh, directly say, yes, crew changes start from today as much as we'd love to. We don't have that crystal ball. This is just a, a discussion. And um, I think um, uh, people have asked about COVID-19 testing as part of uh, the medical evaluation. People have asked about mental health as part of a medical evaluation. Well, to be fair, I think, uh, and if I may be permitted to answer one as moderate, I think this goes back to a lot of uh, how your PNI club um, responds to this. Uh, COVID-19 testing to go on board, actually, right now, there is no exactly sure short um, uh, testing method as such. You have a rapid testing, you have something called a PCR testing, uh, something which uh, gives you instant results, but not reliable, something which takes time to be done at hospitals, which is a longer method, which gives more conclusive results, but exactly not perfect. There is a cost attached to these. What I understand is clinics have now been able to do these on behalf. But again, it is left to the uh, operator to take as part of their emergency response plan, your COVID-19 response plan also, which includes how you're going to control um, the infection from actually going on board, etc. So um, this is something um, quarantine charges and all your PNI club cover would respond um, differently. I mean, each club has got their own way of responding to things, although the rules are similar. Um, similarly, with COVID-19 testing, I think it is a matter of time. Mental health is something which is done by clubs who are actually uh, uh, giving the service of an enhanced pre-employment medical scheme. So uh, most of the clubs, if not all, have their own uh, pre-employment, enhanced pre-employment medical scheme where an additional of about 20 or 25 tests are done in all aspects of uh, psychometry, etc. And I think you get something quite a comprehensive. And that is why the clubs have actually gone down this route, because this offers so much more as a comprehensive medical. So you can be rest assured that mental health is also uh, part of that. Um, so um, quarantine, etc. There are different um, situations. Um, I would think you should engage with your PNI club who would be able to tell you if definitely everything is on a case by case uh, basis. Um, but however, this is probably not uh, 
affecting the mental health right now but um, i think um, this is where it is so um, clubs are doing this uh, whether it's going to be coming as an mlc medical or not uh, i'm not so sure uh, but uh, i think there is always space for improvement and uh, thank you for this discussion as such uh, but uh, we always aim to improve uh, these are thoughts probably the various shipping associations as well as uh, the ni etc uh, can make the right noises in the right places and um, um, yes the recording is uh, taking place i'll have to discuss with the uh, with the branch and then we will make the recording available for everybody and um, thank you everyone for being uh, a part of this i think we've managed to stay on time um, thank you uh, rushali for your expert comments and this very interesting perspective thank you ana uh, once again i think uh, brilliant thoughts uh, from you as well on how uh, managers are taking this forward in true change thank you eves for um, uh, for such a uh, insight on the main things um, yes captain manjit i know one hour is too short for this discussion if i i would love to go on on this but i don't think everyone would want to stay but this is just the first of a series i'm sure we would be um, having more probably not on the same topic uh, we've got uh, a range of expertise with the membership and we'll come out with more programs uh, a well rounded uh, actually uh, audience if you've got anything like i said you can share it with the nautical institute the head office you could share it with the branch you could share it with your local branch if you're not from the singapore branch as such but again um, i think uh, finally with the questions and uh, i think all our panels we are all on the same page we are looking to make things better for our uh, main people the seafarers they are the main player they are those 11 people on the pitch and we are all the spectators trying to you know bring up uh, and make everything ready for them thank you again and uh, thank you for your comments as well uh, we look forward to seeing you for the next one and uh, have a great evening everybody right cheers bye bye and see you all the next time bye bye, bye.